What's up, everybody? The drone rework is live, and the drones have all been changed. We're going to show you what exactly each one does, and I'll tell you exactly what I think about it. We're going to start off with the Tier 3 drones, then we'll go with the Tier 4 drones, then we'll go down to two Tier 2, then Tier 1. So we'll look at all the abilities, and I'll let you know if the drones are worth using or not. So let's go do it to it. Let's go do it to it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and yeah, here we go. First off, we have the Patron, and this one is basically for somebody who does not want to get blinded. You're going to get additional damage all the time, which isn't much, but still pretty decent. You're going to go into stealth when you get blinded, and the blinding will disappear, so that you will not get blinded, and you will go into stealth, plus you'll deal a little bit of extra damage. This drone is nice if you're dealing with anglers or titans with blindy weapons. I think this drone overall is going to be pretty good. Next, we have the Eye, which has a built-in weapon. It gives you a little bit of additional damage that's active all the time. And it's going to give you a little bit of a death mark. So the drone's built-in weapon will apply death mark to the person you're shooting. So this is basically a damage drone right here. It's kind of decent, I suppose. Not something I would run myself, but somewhat decent. Next, we have the Octanian drone, which basically has a built-in weapon. You will deal additional damage all the time, and it's going to lock people down. So basically, this is a damage in a lockdown drone. Not too bad, I suppose. I would probably run this one if I needed a little bit of extra damage. Next, we have the whiteout. It's still going to EMP people, which is great. It's going to give you movement speed. Basically, when you spawn in, you get movement speed. So I think that lasts the entire match. And it's got on high damage fix. So every time you take 100,000 damage, you're going to repair some of your durability. So this is actually a very good drone. It EMPs people, gives you more speed, and gives you some healing. So I like this one. Next, we have the Wasp. It's got its built-in weapon. You will get a little bit of additional damage. And the weapon does a little bit of a DOT effect. This is kind of a boring basic drone. I don't think I would run this myself, but it's kind of okay, I suppose. If you don't have anything else, this one would be decent. Next, we have the Nebula with on high damage fix. So it heals itself every time you do, you take 150,000 damage in three seconds. It gives you extra durability, which I think lasts all the time. And it's got a high damage absorber shield. So this one does have a purple shield that pops up. Every time you take 150,000 damage, this is going to be a very good drone. If you liked Nebula before, you're still going to love the Nebula, I think. Next, we have the Persephone. It's still going to repair your allies. It's going to give you a little bit of additional damage, and it's going to heal you as well. So this is a dealing healing damage drone. Some of you guys might really like this one. I don't think I would run this one myself. It's pretty good, but in my opinion, not really my style. Nice drone, though, overall. Next, we have the Iron Hearth, and this is kind of interesting. So if you get hit with a freeze or a blast effect, you will become immune to that and get additional defense points. As soon as you spawn in, you're going to get extra durability. That should last the entire battle. And next, we have the Frozen Hearth of Iron Hearth. When your robot is affected by a freeze blast effect, the effect is removed and the robot gains temporary immunity to the effect. So this is a okay drone, not something I would really run, but some of you guys might like this one. Now we are moving over to the Tier 4 drones. This is the glider, guys. We are going to check out what the glider does. So if you notice, the Tier 4 drones have four abilities instead of three. So basically, after phase shift fix, when you come out of a phase shift, this will repair you. On spawn durability, so this will give you extra durability. After phase shift, you're going to get more speed. And on low durability defense, so when you get below 35% health, you will gain some defense points. So this is actually going to be a really good drone, especially if you run a phase shift. If you're running phase shift, this is more than likely what you're going to want on there, unless you need more damage. If you want a defense drone that works great with phase shift, this is awesome. Next, we have the armadillo. So when you capture a beacon, you're going to get defense points for every beacon you capture. You're going to get speed the entire game. You're going to get defense points every time you kill somebody and on kill fix. So when you kill somebody, you're going to repair yourself as well. I think this is still going to be an amazing defense drone. I think Armadillo is awesome. 
So next we have the paralysis. It's still going to lock you down. It's going to give you additional damage that is effective all the time on repair unit damage. So every time you take some uh, damage, you're going to repair yourself and on repair unit defense. This is going to be a very good drone for defense and additional damage. So if you're looking for damage and defense, paralysis is going to be amazing. Next, we have the brand new guy called the Deltaki. He's got a built-in weapon. He's going to give you additional damage the entire battle. On module use speed, so every time you use a module, you're going to get a speed increase. And on module use damage, so every time you use a module, you will get extra damage. So that's a pretty cool drone over overall. Built-in weapon, extra damage, extra speed. A lot of people are going to love this for a damage and speed drone. Next, we have the barrel. So on load durability damage. So when your health drops below 20%, you're going to do extra damage. You're going to get additional damage all the time. You're going to have the explosion effect. So when you die, it blows up and hurts the enemies. And low durability speed. So every time your durability is below 20%, the robot will gain more movement speed. So... Barrel is going to be pretty cool. Not really my style. I don't think I'll run these, but a lot of people are going to like this one a lot. Next, we have the Reviver. So if your robot dies, you basically repair yourself and come back to life. On spawn durability. So as soon as you spawn in, you're getting extra durability. On Revive Resist. So when the robot revives, he's going to gain some defense points. And you're also going to get a Aegis Shield that starts when you spawn. And I guess it just gives you an Aegis shield that stays on all the time. Kind of like a Mars or something like that that's always got the Aegis shield. Once you kill it, I'm going to guess it revives. I don't know. I haven't actually used that one yet. But it will give you an Aegis shield the entire battle. Next, we have the Beak on high damage stealth. So every time you take over 100,000 damage in 3 seconds, your robot will go into stealth. Additional damage, so you're going to get more damage the entire battle. The first time you get hit, you're going to go into stealth, and you're going to repair yourself. If you deal, if you get more than 40,000 durability repaired, it's going to repair itself even more. So that's kind of a weird deal, but this is going to be a very hard drone to deal with because it's going to constantly put you into stealth all the time. So, yeah. It's going to be kind of like a purple shield version of stealth, like a stealth version of purple shields. I think this is going to be a nightmare to deal with on the battlefield. When the other guy has this, we are going to hate it because they're going to be stealth constantly. So I think this is going to be a really good drone. Okay, so now we're going to look at the tier two drones. These probably won't be that good. So we're going to start off with the discus on beacon capture speed. So every time you grab a beacon, you're going to get more speed and speed increase that's going to last the entire game. So this one makes you a little bit faster. I mean, it's okay, I guess, but not great. We have the good good guy with low durability Aegis. So when you blow go below 30% health, you will activate a yellow Aegis shield. And you're going to get more durability every time you spawn in. Eh, that's an okay drone, I suppose, if you don't have a better one. Next, we have the sharpshooter that's got a built-in weapon and gives you additional damage. Personally, I would not run this drone. Not very good, honestly. And I guess there are only three tier three drones. So let's go look at the tier one drones. And the tier one drones only have one ability. On mild damage, right? On mild damage, right? Okay, so yeah, whatever. It's an Ansile shield. Once you take a little bit of damage, an Ansile pops up. Not very good at all. The Fly Drone on module use damage. So every time you use a module, you're going to get a little bit of extra damage. That's halfway decent for a new player. We got the Starter Drone with on mild damage fix. So every time you take some damage, you're going to repair yourself a little bit. So that's halfway decent, I guess, for a new player. All right, so I guess that was all the lower tier drones as well. There's there's only a couple of tier two and tier one drones. I thought there were more of those. But anyways, that's kind of what they do, in my opinion, on whether or not those drones are going to be good. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are amazing. Lightning out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell. Set those notifications all. Don't miss out on any of the other good stuff. I don't know what I'm talking about. Have a great day. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>